Okay, good afternoon everybody and thank you very much for this time. Uh, today I want to share part of my research about of my name, Ramadhi Dodo. I am second year PhD student in this laboratory. And today I want to share part of my research about sound-based ranging system in greenhouse environment with multiple effect compensation by using artificial neural network. So in current work, we want to try to develop sound-based positioning system for outdoor application. And in this case, we want to develop some uh, positioning system for navigation of plant cutting robot. And we want also to extend this work to develop some positioning system in greenhouse. And for this kind of system, the ranging, the distance measurement is very important because it's the basic information we use to determine the uh, position of some target here, for example, the robot here. However, to get the accurate measurement in greenhouse is not easy because there are many challenges we have to handle in greenhouse because there are temperature gradient as usually is very, uh, much, much higher than outside. And also high humidity and also wind, dispersion of wind, for example, in this case, we have some fan here, so it will generate some wind velocity and it also will affect the measurement accuracy, the noise and also the obstacle. And in this presentation today, I want to try to deal with this, the last part, the obstacle. Why? Because the obstacle, it will generate what we call multipath uh, multi effect. So. This also generates some error for the distance measurement. And in the study, I want to try to develop some error compensation by using no network. And later, I want to discuss about what is multipath effect. Uh, multipath effect actually is uh, some phenomena that we observe when sound interact with some obstacle here. So for example, here we can see if there is no obstacle, of course the sound will uh, propagate from the transmitter to receiver directly. But in case there are many obstacles, it's possible to have some direct path like this and also some reflectance or maybe diffraction. So in this case, all of possible paths will mix together like this. So this direct path and direct path and will mix together. So as a result, in multipath environment, we will observe this kind of, uh, this one is the cross correlation wave, and we can have many peaks here. In general case, maybe if there is no obstacle, we only have this condition, this is only one peak. But if there is multipath effect, we can observe many peaks here. And we can observe this from the experiment like this. So we do, we did some experiment with different uh, plant thickness. So we, uh, how to say, we measure some distance and we put some plant row here, and then we use different thickness. And for different thickness, we can observe this condition. This only a uh, small part of the received signal. This is not received signal actually. This is the cross correlation signal, and we can see here. If there is the thicker the obstacle, we can observe more peak here. And why this phenomena will generate some problem? It's related to the our distance measurement system. Because in current system, this our device, you can see here, we can have some speaker to generate some sound and then receiver this microphone here and then we do analyze like this system. And in current system, we get the distance by using this uh, flow chart. The first, we receive the signal, sound wave, and also the trigger, because we need to estimate the time of flight for the sound wave. So that's why we need the original sound and also the trigger, so we can estimate the time. And from this, we, did, we do the cross correlation, and then we can estimate the time of arrival for each, for as a sound and also the trigger signal. And then from this, we can estimate the time of flight of the sound wave. And if we know the time, 
and then we can calculate, we just multiply by sound velocity, and then we can get the distance. The problem is, in current system, we use this method. We detect the maximum peak from this. For example, this is the auto correction value, and then we detect the maximum peak, and then we estimate the time from this. But we can see from this result, actually, of course, the direct fact should be uh, should be the the first peak. But in this case, we can observe here that the maximum peak is not the first, so that's why it should be wrong detection. So that's why it will generate some problem if we use the current system. And also, we have to understand that the obstacle in greenhouse is much much different with the obstacle with the previous study because this topic actually is not only is a not new topic but also many people are already working with this and they usually working in how to say in previous study they usually working in office building so the characteristic of the obstacle that we need to handle is different for example this in building like this maybe if there's some microphone here and it should be different system, this microphone and the mobile target, this would be some speaker here. So, it's some obstacle here, for example, wall or something. So, it's quite simple shape and also not so many obstacle here. So, totally different with the greenhouse. For example, this is uh, our obstacle. We have plant row here, we can detect many, for example, stem, branch, and even leaf and fruits. Of course, it's much more complex than this condition. So, considering this condition, I try to, how to say, instead of estimating the time of arrival, I want to get the current system, still use the current system, but also I want to predict the, the error from the receive signal, because you can see from, sorry, I think, oh. for example, like this, in this case, the signal is totally different, and then we can also have some data. We can est we, we know what kind of error we can get from this kind of signal. So like a pattern recognition, we learn the pattern of the received signal, and then we estimate the error from this. This is the idea. So in this case, we want to propose the neural network-based error compensation. So the procedure is like this. So. This actually is the current system. We receive signal, do some cross correlation, and then estimate the TOA, and then get the estimated distance. This is the current system. And then we add some compensation method here. So based on uh, cross correlation here, we develop some prediction model. And then we can estimate the error. And then from this, we do compensation, and then we can get compensated distance. So this is the network I try to use here. There's some um, only simple three layer neural network with five input. Here, some feature that I use input is extracted from cross correlation wave we get. So, there's some um, delay time, maximum peak, average peak, standard deviation, and number of peak. I will explain this in the next slide. And from this input and using this network, we can estimate the error here. So this is the typical receive signal here. So I take some feature from this signal. For example, here, estimated time delay it should be some, we use the current system. We detect the maximum peak, and then we subtract with the trigger time. So from this, we can estimate the time delay. And then we detect the maximum peak value, the average peak, because so far, what is it? If there is multipath or no multipath effect, the average peak is also different, the distribution also different. So that's why I want to take some statistics data like the average, standard deviation, and also the number of peak here. What is number of peak? So based on the average and also standard deviation, I take some threshold value. And then I calculate the number of peak that larger or higher than this threshold value. And then I use as the number of peak. And I use these five input to estimate the error. So, we need some data to generate the model. So that's why we conducted this experiment. We try to, what to say, to get the data that represent 
uh, many possibility for the sound waves to propagate in greenhouse. So that's why we did this experiment. So this one to represent some sound propagation with different thickness. So this plant row, the width is about 0 0.7 meter. And by changing the angle here, we can get the different thickness. And then we can observe what happened and what the effect of the thickness of the obstacle to the multiplied effect. And also we did this. We observed the effect of plant row like this. So we try like in small or medium greenhouse maybe there are four or six rows. So in this case we just try <coughs> this no obstacle, no plant row here and then one and second uh, and two plant rows here. And here just simple piston measurement in between the plant rows. So from these cases, this would be around 10 cases. And for each measurement, we use three different sound waves, 6, 18, and 30 kilohertz. And we can observe. We also want to observe what is the effect of the sound frequency. So based on this data, then we generate the neural network model. So we do this the training. And before training, of course, we need to determine the optimum architecture. We, we see in my uh, previous slide that there are some input and also some output. This fixed five input and one output. But there are some parameters we have to set, like the number of neurons in the hidden layer. So the best is the simple architecture is the best. So it will save our computation time and also it will be very good because how to say we don't need to uh, consider about the time oh almost 11 so this is the model and this parameter I use for training and this is the result so from this result we see that for the training and also for the testing I think this model is quite good so we can estimate this and okay sorry I will make it faster after using this model, we do it the com uh, compensation. This is the result. So, this uh, all experiment we did, and this is the error we get by using the maximum peak detection method. And this one is the result we obtain by using compensation method. You can see here, in many cases, the compensation method can perform very well, and it's generate uh, less error than the current system like maximum peak detection method like this maybe too many number here but this is a result so from this is some discussion that in most cases by using this compensation method we can get the smaller error but in some cases maybe this also very how to say, interesting we have some question maybe why not all cases we can get the better result but only in 22 what happened with the other eight so you can see here that in some cases the maximum peak simple maximum peak is uh, better than the proposed method but in this case only happen in the if there is no or minimum multiple effect for example you can see here uh, this so the board is the I indicate this the uh, better so for example in this case this one is better than this but you can see here this the compared to other is the minimum multiplied effect here and also here so we can see like this one so if there is a no or even minimum multiplied effect maybe this algorithm is enough but if there is a serious multiplied effect we need to do some compensation and the last is for not the last the for almost all cases 29 out of 3 uh, of, uh, out of 30 the error obtained by using a progress method is less than 100 millimeter this is the value we can we want to achieve so we have to get the system with error less than this so I think it's quite good and we can also observe some uh, effect of the frequency if there is no or minimum multiple effect there is no significant effect of the frequency so we can use 6 18 or 30 we can get the result is not different but if the significant 
multiple effect. For example, the thickness of the obstacle is very, let's say, very large. So it's some significant influence of the frequency, and we can see that low frequency is more suitable than higher frequency. And this is the conclusion and the future plan. And compared to the maximum peak detection method, the proposed method can compensate the error, and we can generate, uh, we can get the less error for the distance measurement, and we can also observe some relation between the frequency and also the error when there is a serious uh, multipath effect. And for the future plan, I want to take uh, more data because it's only a few data, so I want to take more data that represent al uh, almost all possibility for the sun propagation in greenhouse to make the model much more robust. And also, we want to do the investigation about the frequency and multipath effect relation and try to develop some commercial method using this relation. Thank you very much. Oh, 15 minutes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think PhD uh, course students uh, already got uh, used to presenting Hi. so much. So maybe we don't practice. Hi, it's well, right <laughs> Before this presentation. Hi. <laughs> okay, any, any question? Hi. In your conclusion, you said that you were looking to uh, compensate for uh, multi path. Hi, hi. When it's close and there's no uh, obstacles, it's better with the uh, direct feed. Hi, hi. So are you proposing to do only uh, a multi-path analysis and try and get it as good as the uh, maximum peak one? Or are you suggesting that it is a, a switchover? When it's close, you do the multi-peak. When it's further away, multi-path, you... Hi. So I think, uh, besides the compensation, I think the first we need to mitigate. Like we predict this is multi-path condition or not. If we can decide this and we can mitib uh, mitigate the, the multipath effect or not, we can what say, selectively apply it our compensation method, I think. So if we, from the receive signal, we can observe, like we can predict, oh, this no multipath effect here. So I just use the simple maximum peak detection. Or from the receive signal, we can predict, oh, this is some multipath effect here. So I have to make, uh, I have to use the compensation method. I think it's better. So we can combine this if we can mitigate this is a multipath effect or not. So this is the problem. How to mitigate this multipath, I think. Hi. This is a common question when we use the neural network or other soft computing method because, uh, of course, some model may be very good in certain condition, and may its model, uh, this model may not be able to handle some different condition. So that's why in the, my future plan, I just uh, how to say, try to take more data. Maybe it's also only applicable for specific maybe plan or maybe some greenhouse condition. But uh, I think this is some method because, of course, the best way is we can generate the general method that can, can be applied for many kind of system. But this is the goal of the goal. But of course, we have a different approach that maybe is also useful and we can also apply the system. So this is what we try now. And that's why in the second future plan, we also try to develop other uh, method to handle this condition. Thank you.
First three biggest. Mm. I, I don't know why the, we use the first three biggest. This would be some reason. Like for example, why I choose the the maximum peak maximum. or maybe the average and standard deviation because it represents the distribution of the signal. Because like for example, sorry, it's not easy to use this. So for example, like this. We can see here that the distribution of the peak is different in this and this and this. So that's why I want to take this representation. How distribution can be represented in some feature. So that's why I take the average and also the standard deviation. I think it represents the distribution of this because I say that this only small part. In this case, if we take a longer sample number, it will be more peak here and this less peak. So the average and also the standard deviation is represent the data distribution I see. So that's why I choose uh, this feature. Uh, in fact, which peak is uh, true, true peak? It actually should be the first, uh, but first in some case, the noise and also the peak is not easy to distinguish. This is peak or noise, so that's why in the previous seminar, I proposed a method to take peak one by one. And the problem is it takes time because we need some uh, optimization to extract the, the peak. So this takes time. So that's why I proposed another method that maybe not uh, take a long time. So that's why I proposed this. Yeah, you may be able to Actually, we how to say what we say cross correlation. Actually, we compare the received signal and the original signal, mm -hmm. and then we detect and we get this result. Actually, this actually we already try to match, so we can get this cross correlation value. Actually, but uh, still, we get the result like this. So it's not easy to detect the first peak is which one is the noise or maybe the peak. This is the problem actually, and of course, if we can detect many methods actually propose to detect the this the first peak the actual time of flight they try to or the time of arrival actually they want to extract this many methods actually propose but uh, still it's not uh, easy Because the multipath effect uh, uh, is not caused by noise, but by the reflection or diffraction, so the this totally different. Of course, without multipath effect, we also still have some noise like this one. So if there is no noise, it should be very clear peak and also this here. But we can see still here some noise because the multipath effect, like this one. It's not caused by the noise, but by the reflection and diffraction. Hi. Uh, to improve the, your PowerPoint, Hi. Uh, maybe a little bit uh, larger size of uh, uh, letter. Letter. Uh, because this is uh, a <coughs> figure, not the <coughs> actual. <laughs> yeah. 
Sorry. Would, would, you, would you show a yeah, figure, figure of the um, experimental one to see what the camera That would be also very small, yes? Yeah? Uh, oh. Maybe uh, some of them are very small. Oui? Oh, no, no. Sorry. And this, and that one also small. And this, and this one, this one very small. <laughs> this, yes. Maybe, why don't you use color? Uh, some speaker, blue color, and uh, some microphone, red color, or something. Oh, hi. Just, uh, <laughs> some Maybe some. I need to use the original picture, not just uh, this. Yeah, anyway, so hi. you can improve more. Hi. Okay, thank you very much.